Today we're going to be looking at how to multiply integers, which are positive and negative numbers. And we're going to focus on four different cases. We're going to look at how to multiply a positive with another positive, a positive multiplied by a negative, a negative multiplied by a positive, and a negative multiplied by the, another negative number. But I'm not going to tell you the answers just yet because we're going to discover them together using none other than these fabulous and wonderful integer chips. And these are fantastic to learn this stuff at first because it teaches you how to think, which is a good thing because then you'll understand things better and you'll remember it a lot longer than if I just spilled the beans and told you the answers. So let's review these for uh, really quickly. These here are going to represent negatives. The blue are negatives, just like the code here. And the red are going to be the positives. So think of these as like players. This is like the blue basketball team players. And these are the red basketball team players. What I'm going to do today here is I'm going to split this lesson up into two parts. The first part is I'm going to teach you how to read multiplication equations when they involve integers. And the second part is we're going to learn how to do the math. So here's part one. Let's learn how to read this stuff. And I'm going to start really basic. I'm going to look at this middle symbol here. This X, this multiplication sign, you already know it means groups of. Which means we're going to be making groups of stuff. All right, you know, if you don't like the word groups, no problem. We can fix this up. We can switch the word groups with teams. You know, I like sports. I like ball. I like hockey, soccer, you name it. I love it all. So let's talk about teams. Groups and teams are the same thing. This is more exciting. This is kind of dull, boring. So let's talk about the exciting stuff. Teams. Now let's start on, uh, let's ignore these symbols here. Let's look at this two. It just says two. Two teams. If you read it left to right, it says two teams of three. So we want to have two teams of three. But what kind of teams? Do we want the red team or do we want the blue team? Think of this number as the kind of players that we need. We have two options. We can have the positive guys. These are like the good guys, the faceless wonders. Can't really see any face on them. They're the good guys. They want to be remaining anonymous. Or the blue team, the negatives. These are the, the negative guys. If it's a positive number, if the second number is positive, you're going to pick the red players. You're going to pick these guys here, these red chips. But if it's a negative, you're going to pick this. So think of this second number here as the players per team. The second number is going to be the number of players per team, but specifically, what kind of players? So that brings us now to the positive sign. So the positive sign here, this is where it gets interesting. If that first symbol is a positive, you're going to say add. You're going to say add. You're not going to say add here. You're just going to say it there. This is just how you read these things. That's how they've been designed and developed. So if we read it left to right now, what does it say? Let's read it together. It says add two teams of, add two teams, a positive three. Positive three. Yeah, those are the good guys. So you're going to make two teams with three good guys in each team. Now, it sounds like we're overcomplicating this because we all know two times three is six. We just say six. But I do need to teach you how to think through these because the problems, you know, they get a little bit trickier. So let me switch one of these out. I'm going to change one of these numbers. You tell me how it affects everything. How about if I make this negative two? Let's read this together. This still says add two teams of negative two. Negative two players per team. Oh yeah, right. Those are the blue guys. So I'm going to put two blue guys in each team. I need two. I need to add two teams of these guys. So that's how you read this first part. What if we switched that one, this first number out? We did this. Let's say we did that. Look at that symbol here. It doesn't say add anymore. Instead, it says subtract. What we're going to do, and I'm going to explain this later, but subtract two teams of positive three. Those are the good guys. When will we ever need to subtract teams in real life? Well, if they were cheating, we need to subtract them and disqualify them. Or if they lose in a tournament, then they're subtracted out of the tournament. In any case, we need to subtract two teams of positive three. Two teams that have three red players on them. That's what it's implying. Effect things. This still says subtract. 
This still says two teams of, but now how many players are on the teams? Five. There's five red guys on each team. We have to subtract two of those teams, get rid of them. How about if I reversed it and I did this? Do I still keep the subtract? Of course not. I have to get rid of that and put the add back on, the addition. So now I'm going back, I'm adding five teams of negative two. I don't need these guys, I need these guys now. The blue team. I need to add those teams. When would we ever need to add teams in real life? Well, if you want to play ball, right? You need to start a tournament. You say, hey, look, we need to add five teams to our tournament roster. So we need to add five teams with two in each team. It's kind of like, uh, you know, two on two basketball. You know, most of it is three on three. Let's call it two on two basketball. The negative here though, it just tells us the kind of team it is. Either you can have the red team or you can have the blue team, which are the negatives. So, you know, if we're feeling good about reading this, let's go ahead and talk about a few rules. Here's the rules for multiplying integers. The first number, which is what we just looked at, tells us to either add or subtract a certain number of groups. That's what it tells us. The first number tells us that. What does the second number tell us? Tell us how many things or players, how many things to place inside of each group or each team. These two are straightforward. Look at the third one. You must always start with nothing. Is that a new rule? It's not a new rule, it's not. You know, back in grade four, grade three, when a teacher said, hey, do three times two, use these chips, start building it. Well, you always had nothing on your table and then you started putting things down. So this is gonna be important here. We're gonna come back to this. You gotta start with nothing. Let's start part two of this lesson. We're gonna show all our work on the basketball court, on the multiplication mat. We're gonna call it the basketball court. Here's case number one. Step one, we're gonna learn how to, well, we're gonna write down what this is implying us to do. So here, the first symbol is telling us to add. But add what? Add three. Add three what? Add three teams. Add three teams of positive two. These are the red guys. This is the red players. So we need to add to our tournament three teams of positive two. So we go ahead, we get a team of positive two. This is ridiculously simple. We say you're one team, you're another team, and you're another team. We added those teams to the floor. Now remember, I need to start with nothing, and I did. I had an empty floor, I added them on, it's perfect. My answer, we'll just count them. It's going to be positive six. Let's jump to number two. Here what the question is saying is pretty much the same thing, except uh, we're not going to add three teams. We're going to add four teams of positive three. So we're still looking at the good guys. We need the red team, but I'm forgetting something. I need to start with nothing. So let's clear the court. Court's clear. Now add four teams of positive three. This is really simple. You just go one team, two teams, and put your third team down, and we're done. Oh no, we're not. We need one more team. And you can see all together we have 12 players. So we say positive 12. So can you see any possibility other than getting a positive answer? If you're multiplying a positive with a positive, you're adding good players, you're adding red players, you're gonna keep getting a positive answer. So positive multiplied by a positive will always get you a positive answer. Here's case number two. We're gonna multiply a positive with another negative number. So reading it, let's start reading this properly. We're gonna say add three, that doesn't change. Add three teams of negative four. We know that negative four is talking about the blue players. So we need to have three teams. We're gonna add them to the court. We're gonna add them on three teams of negative four. There's one team. There's a second team. And there's my third team. I've added them. I've got 12 blue players. So I write negative 12. 
Negative meaning they're blue, they're team blue. Look at this one. I gotta clear the board, start with nothing. Let's go back and clear the court. Now we can uh, attempt this problem. It says add two teams of negative five. Negative five, yeah, that's the five blue players on each team. So we're gonna put five guys here and five guys here. Five guys. We're gonna have 10 players all together. So we're gonna say negative 10. Let me ask you something. If you add teams of blue, is there any way you're gonna get red? No, you're not. Your answer will always be in negatives, in blue players. So we can be pretty certain about this, is that if you add, add teams of blue, you're always gonna get blue as your answer, the negatives. So now we know that a positive multiplied by a negative is always gonna be a negative. You know what? If you, go th if you ignore these symbols, you just go three times four, you get 12. Look at the symbols, negative. Two times five, 10. Look at the symbols, negative. Here's case number three. What do I do before I start? Gotta start with nothing. I gotta clear the court. Now take a look at this question. How do we read it? I'm gonna write subtract. Subtract what? Subtract two teams Teams of positive three. What does the positive three imply? It implies the, the red team. We're talking about three red players. Subtracting two teams of positive three off the basketball court that starts with nothing. Well, I've got a problem now because I can't really go into my court and pull players off. I can't do that. There's nobody to pull off. So what do I do? Here's what you do. Remember back to the addition of uh, integers using tiles? We used a concept called zero pairs. Remember zero pairs? If you put a red player with a blue player, they're worth nothing. This is positive one, this is negative one. Together they cancel out, they make zero. This is like saying zero. And look what I've done with my zero pairs make nothing symbol. I've color coded them. Remember a red and a blue cancel out? I'm so proud of myself for this, check it out. These cancel out to make zero. These cancel out to make zero. Zero, zero. These two go together to make zero. Zero, 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 and zero. Check this out, zero, zero, and zero. This whole thing, I made a sign talking about zero pairs and the entire sign is worth zero. I just thought I'd worth noting. So anytime you need things, you gotta subtract players. Just put zero pairs, just put them down. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a pair here. We'll put a pair here. Just team them up, red with blue, red with blue. Go like this. How many players do I have to remove altogether? Two groups of three. I gotta remove two groups of three. That's six players. So I need six zeros. Now, can I remove two groups? I gotta subtract two groups of positive three. I can, yes. Why would I need to do this? Well, because maybe they cheated. So I have to subtract them off the core. I gotta say, you're eliminated. I gotta remove two groups of positive three. Here's one group of positive three and another group of positive three. You're disqualified and you're disqualified. What's left over? Negative six. Can you see any other possibility of disqualifying red players and having red players on the court? No, you're always gonna have blue players left over. That's why a negative times a positive is a negative. Take a look at this one here. We have subtract four teams of positive two. Clear the court. Do you see a problem? Yes, we don't have anything to subtract. So what do I do? No problem, put those zero pairs down because zero pairs are make nothing. And what do I need to start with? I need to start with nothing. So no problem, add those zero pairs. Add as many as you like, just don't waste any time doing it. Just add what you need. So how many players do I have to remove altogether? Four groups or four teams of two, that's eight players. So put eight zeros, put them down like this like that. 
and this one should do. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. Am I starting with nothing? Yes, I am. I'm starting with nothing. This is all worth nothing. Take out your four groups of two positives. Let's do it. Here's one group of two positives. Here's another group disqualified. Here's a third group disqualified. Here's a fourth group disqualified. I disqualified them. I've only got negatives. Negative what? Negative eight. A negative times a positive is always going to get you a negative answer. Let's fill it into our chart. What do you think this one will get you? you probably guessed it. But let's take a look at two questions from that scenario. Here's our last case, a negative times another negative number. Let's read it. Subtract, subtract two teams of negative three. The problem is we don't have anybody on the mat to subtract. So what do I do if I have nobody on the mat? I add my zero pairs. Now I gotta remove six players altogether, so I'll put six zeros. One, two, three, four. I'll put five and six. Let's organize them. Do I have nothing to start with? Absolutely, I've got nothing. These are worth zero. Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Let's do our business. We gotta disqualify, but I'm not disqualifying the red team. I'm disqualifying the blue team, subtracting two groups of negative three. Here's one group of negative three, bad boys. Here's another group of negative three. Should have uh, followed the rules. Get rid of them. We got positive six left over. And the very last question says subtract five groups of negative two. I need to start with nothing. Problem is now, same problem as usual. I need things on the table to subtract. So I'll go like this. I'll put my zeros. Can you tell me how many players I'm gonna need to subtract? Five groups of two, two blue guys, so I need 10 players. Guess how many zeros I'm, I should probably put down? 10 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me get a couple more. Nine, 10. I know some of you are thinking, uh, Mr. Melham, what if I put um, extra zeros? What'll happen? Nothing will happen. Look what happens. I put an extra one down. Look what happens now. Five groups of two blue guys. So let's go, here's one group of two, one group of two, one group of two, that's three, another group is four, another group is five. Got rid of them all. Look, these guys here, they're extra that I put down. Hey, I made a mistake, no problem. Just don't count them, they're, they're zero, just kind of ignore them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten good guys. Is there any way we can get blue players using a negative times a negative? Think about that. It's pretty much impossible. So you know what we know now is that a negative subtracting groups of negatives leaves you with positives. Just like we saw here. I hope you guys love this lesson as much as I love teaching it to you. I love teaching this stuff and I love educating people on how this stuff works. It's a lot of fun once you start to get the hang of it and you learn a lot about how all this stuff works so you're not memorizing silly little things that you'll probably end up forgetting. You know what? If this was helpful for you, click the like button, share it with your friends so they can all benefit. If you have any suggestions for any math or science lessons that you'd like me to make for you in a future video, just type it in the comment down below. I'll take a look at it and I'll be happy to make one for you as soon as possible. But like always, guys, I thank you once again for joining me and I'll see you later.